Before then, the ghost trains of old England. The travel writer Ian Marchant explores the twilight world of passenger trains that no one wants you to get on. Here we are at Stockport Station. It's a station I know very well. I used to live in Stockport in the 80s in my vain attempt to become a rock and roll star and plug into the Manchester scene. The Manchester scene didn't get as far south as Stockport and so it didn't quite come off. So I love Stockport Station. And we've come to Stockport to catch the 9.22 Stockport to Staley Bridge train. Once a week, you can't get back. There isn't a once a week Staley Bridge to Stockport train. You can get from Stockport to Staley Bridge, but you cannot get from Staley Bridge to Stockport without a great deal of changing. And this is a so-called ghost train. And I'm going to be catching as many of these trains as I can and also going to ghost stations, stations that are only open once a week for the sake of what? Actually, the Stockport to Staley Bridge service did used to have some function. I remember a pal of mine would get on at Aberystwyth, change at Shrewsbury and then change at Stockport and catch this Stockport to Staley Bridge train and then go home to Huddersfield. And he looked forward to getting to Staley Bridge because there's a real ale bar on the station. So it was a viable through route. I still don't see why it isn't part of a viable through route from Wales and the West Country up to Yorkshire. Otherwise, you have to go into Piccadilly, hack across to Victoria on the Metro, carrying all your luggage. This is a perfectly viable route that people would still use. Hello. Hi. You're waiting for the Stockport Stadium Bridge train? Yes, I am, yeah. Every... Oh, well, I'm uh, also an active member of the Friends of Reggie South Station. Um, I've got a day off, so what better way of hoping to promote the, uh, the cause and to uh, get the support of some of the passengers on the train today. Reddish South is the first station on the line after Stockport. If you lived in Reddish South and travelled to Staley Bridge, there would be no way back by train unless you went in a big circle back to Manchester and waited a week to take the same train. This man was more than a friend of Reddish South. It's just purely for pleasure today, just to pass through parts of Reddish that I used to, in the old days, do a bit of train spotting. So, yeah. uh, just a bit of nostalgia, really. Yeah. But why carry on operating such a pointless train? because it's not easy to close down a railway service. The law says a train company needs to consult widely, which is a costly and bureaucratic business. Closing a line is unpopular, but letting a service decline to the point of imbecility is legal, easy and cheap. The Stockport to Staley Bridge service costs only £2,600 a year, which is just £50 a trip. Trains like this which exist only to avoid the embarrassment and expense of closing the service completely, are often known as parliamentary trains. But who travels on them? So here we are. There are three guys back there and four guys here, so they're including us. There are nine people on this train. Hello. We're making a, a programme about ghost trains and we wondered if you were on this train for train enthusiast reasons or whether you actually need to get from Stockport to Staley Bridge. Rail staff, and I've been over here for a few years, so just having a look at it. I used to work trains through Staley Bridge several years ago. It's a beautiful yeah. morning, done a walk, we're going to Staley Bridge for a bite to eat and then back into Manchester and maybe a few pints. Can we ask you all? motivation for travelling from Stockport to Staley Bridge at 9.22 on a Friday morning. Just purely out of interest, I th think they call us the parliamentary train, don't they? So uh, I've wanted to do it for some time, but yeah. uh, it's the first opportunity I've had. Hello. I don't suppose you're commuting from Stockport uh, to Staley Bridge? No, no, I'm, I've, I've come up from London, I'm off to um, an exhibition and conference which has been held in Ashton and the line. Yeah. It was just a case of typing into the National Rail website and then it, it, it told me this was the, the way to go. So. Wow! Yeah. That's incredible! Uh, You're an actual proper passenger. You typed yeah. into the website and That's it's right. Said, yeah. So it just said change at Stockport and along came this train. Perhaps the, the whole internet kind of wobbles and went, ooh! Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Have you any idea at how you're going to get back? Um, not yet. <laughs> You're not going to catch this train, allow me to assure you. Oh, really? Okay. No, because there isn't a return journey. Crikey. We're there. 
we've achieved our modest aim. It's 10 to 10, according to my Swiss Railway watch, and uh, it's taken us half an hour to get to the really rather lovely station at Staley Bridge. The train now standing at platform three is not in public service. Please do not board this train. That's the train we've just come in on. And it said it's not in public service, <laughs> even while we were on it. This is the Staley Bridge buffet bar. So I suppose we should, since we're in Staley Bridge, it would be rude, even though it's 10 o'clock in the morning, five past 10 in the morning, not to give it a go, really. And it's a lovely thing. And here are our fellow passengers from the Stockport Staley Bridge. Uh, wait, is it open? Just about, yes, yeah. Oh. That's the story of my life, so. <laughs> I think the people who are catching this train are heroic because they don't really want to go from Stockport to Staley Bridge. They believe that there's a point in keeping this service open. We met a chap who was a friend of Reddish South Station. We met another chap who was a friend of Denton Station. They didn't talk to one another. It, I didn't get the impression that the friends of Reddish South Station and the friends of Denton Station were friends, but I suspect they might be allies, a sort of entente cordiale. Um, they're heroes. They're out there fighting for something which seems to me important, which is to try and keep train lines open if people want to use them and keep cars off the road and stop having to go into the middle of Manchester to get from Stockport to Staley Bridge or more importantly from the west of England and Wales up into Yorkshire. On the other hand you could argue that they're just line bashers essentially they're people who want to tick off that they've been on every possible train it's a kind of weird bloke collecting there were no women on that train and I can't imagine they've been women on that train for a very long time. Denton and Reddish South, with their one train a week in one direction, are among the least used stations in Britain. But according to the statistics, there's a station with even fewer passengers. The least used station in Britain is Teesside Airport, with 44 people either buying a ticket to it or from it in 2008. I caught the single train a week to the airport with Alex Nelson, a railway entrepreneur who last year organised an excursion to the station to try to raise its profile. The aim was to see if we could get in one day the total annual usage of the station at Teesside Airport um, <coughs> travelling on one train. And we did. It was only 26. 26 arrivals, 26 departures. Yeah. And we were on the same train as we're on now, the 1020 from Darlington through to Saltburn. So why is there only one train a week to Teesside Airport? Well, it's because it's uh, it's easier to stop one train a week than actually go through the closure process and physically close the station. The airport itself is now called Durham Tees Valley. It was renamed in 2004. Uh, is it close to the airport? No. Someone's actually going to Teesside Airport. So that'd be anyone who gets on or off there, so yeah, it's amazing. Can you remember the last time people got on or off? I've never had anyone put it that Have way. You? No, so. Well, we've made your day. Yeah. Nice to get on and off. I wonder if there's, you know, at least a possibility that if it was better served by oh, public yes, transport, certainly, it might certainly. And, and it if more, there was a regular half hourly service to the airport, you'd probably get people using it who worked at the airport. I should imagine the station would be fairly well used. There's the airport. Uh, problem is, is there's a huge fence between us and actually getting into the airport, but it is there. Nobody else got off, perhaps unsurprisingly. It looks quite nice in perfectly good nick, isn't it? I mean, yes, they repainted the, the bridge there, the nice Northern Rail blue about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it must have cost yeah. far more to paint the bridge than all the, all the revenue for 10 years, you can yeah. be sure. So, Alex, who are these people, do you think, who are coming to Teesside Airport? Quite a number will be Railway Correspondence uh, Society members uh, who collect railway tickets, who yeah. buy the ticket and never make the journey at all. There's a payphone. And it is working. <laughs> the number is 01325 
335406. You could ring that up. You could. And, it's um, probably Britain's least used payphone and it is actually working. But there's no way from here into the airport. Well, we'll show you the way you can go. It's uh, over this bridge, yep. around that little turning circle, along that little lane there, a single, single carriageway width, as you see. Here we are at the gate to the airport. It's taking about a quarter of an hour to walk here. It says, this gate is a security access point. There is no entry through this gate for any passengers, customers or visitors to site. So we can't actually get in, and it's taken a quarter of an hour to get in here. And we've got to keep walking, Alex, is yes, that right? Yeah, we'll try the gate round by the airport hotel. It says this access point is for the use of St George Hotel patrons only. Insert code to enter. You either go into the hotel there and uh, persuade them nicely to open the gate, yeah. which they probably won't do. No. And if they won't do that, you have to walk all the way around back to the airport industrial estate access road to the roundabout. Yeah and then left and back round into the airport car park. It takes at least 20 minutes to do that. We've already been walking for 20 minutes. Yeah, we have. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so 40 minutes. I feel like this is the promised land, really. <laughs> we could go to Jersey or Amsterdam. Or Dublin, Dublin, Southampton. Southampton would be great. The world is our oyster. It certainly is. I wonder which uh, Amsterdam airport it goes to. If it's Schiphol, that, that's a hub airport. We could go in But our next destination wasn't Amsterdam. It was Ealing Broadway. For here was the strangest ghost train of all, because it is, in fact, a bus. And you won't find it on any timetable. It goes every Tuesday from Ealing Broadway to Wandsworth Road. The day we joined it, at bus stop E, there was a bit of a crowd because enthusiast Don Kennedy had incorporated it into one of his guided tours. Normally, how many would there be? On average, I would say between zero and one. How do you find all your enthusiasts? Well, how many... most of them are from the people that support my Lost Railways of London uh, events. We're going to be looking at where Clapham Goods Yard was and then in, in the High Street, I've been showing people the surviving walls of the bus garage, which once housed the Transport Museum. P Peter Green here is the longest travel. He's come all the way from near Preston, especially for today. Preston? Yeah. To travel on the coach? Which is something of a unique bus opportunity service. on this. Uh, have you been on any of the other great ghost trains? Yes, quite a lot of them, yes. Well, what have you done? Uh, well, over the years, I've probably done all that was available. Stockport to... Oh, Stockport, yeah, Stockport to Staley Bridge, that's definitely an outstanding anomaly, yes. Are you waiting for the, um... The ghost bus, yes. Ghost bus? Yes, the ghost bus. Yeah, how fantastic. Because we're interested in railway history and... So, this ghost bus, have you ever caught this one before? Never. Didn't even know it existed. Doesn't seem to be very widely advertised. No, this ghost bus is a bit secret probably because it's utterly bonkers and shameful. In theory, it replaces a train that used to run from Manchester to Brighton. When the train was withdrawn, someone noticed that this meant that three tiny bits of track in West and South London no longer had any passenger service running over them. So, to avoid the accusation that a service had been illegally closed, someone decided that the ghost bus would fill the gaps. But only those with an inside track could know about it. How did you know that this coach, bus, train existed? We're off from London Overground. You've seen the bus go by every Tuesday outside the station office window, usually with nobody on it, of course. We thought we'd have a ride. You know, we've got a bit of a soft spot for it, really. It's very difficult to actually find any sort of details about it. You know, we, we, dis we have to display a poster at our stations where it calls. And it's, it's unbranded, it's pure black and white, it's an anonymous poster with no operating company on it. Bearing in mind that, of course, this bus replaces a former cross-country network train, shall we say. And if you ring the inquiry number at the bottom, which we did once just for devilment, yes. you, you're not put through to a train operator or a bus operator, it connects you directly to the switchboard at the Department of Transport. To which, when we tried it, the very polite lady had no idea what we were talking about. It's becoming sinister. It's quite a sinister past this. It's kind of fun. There's black arts going on here. Nobody knows who funds it. 
Nobody knows who runs it. It's very, um, it's very secret service. Hello, you're Tom. Yeah. How long have you been doing these uh, trips on the ghost? Oh, stuff? since last year. This is my um, fourth trip on it, and it's like a day out for me. You know, to see what's going on. So you head out on the bus, and you, there's a cafe you go to. Yeah, down Catham there. High Street Station. The station yeah. underneath that, so we meet up there and have something to eat. It's hot, it's sticky, we're stuck in traffic. It just strikes me as ludicrous. I mean, it's a great day out with the guys. This must be the slowest train service outside of the great little trains of Wales, anyway, where you go on little narrow gauge trains and you expect to go at 12 miles an hour. Well, more like four miles an hour. At the Clapham High Street Cafe, Don and I spread out some rail maps and tried to figure out what this ghost bus was supposed to replace. We were joined by a man who used to work for British Rail who didn't want to be named. The erstwhile intercity cross-country service from Manchester to Brighton was a very useful service. It served Oxford, Reading, Kensington Olympia, Croydon, Gatwick Airport and through to Brighton, obviating the use of uh, change going into London Terminal and changing and crossing onto the tube and things like that. It didn't actually pick people up at Ealing Broadway, did it? Oh, good heavens, no. So now, <clears throat> the little bus that we've been on, that's just to keep alive this fiction that there are still trains running yes, over these bits of planes. Yes, that's right. The DFT would have looked at a map like this and would have thought about these three sections of route and would have thought, what's the minimum bus journey we can come up with that encompasses the geographical area that, that includes these three sections? Yeah. And it's a whole different sense. ball game from the principle of running a major cross-country service. They're literally running this section on the shortest section of that long Manchester to Brighton service, Ealing Broadway, to Wandsworth Road. Now, nobody travels just to Ealing Broadway, and Wandsworth Road is in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's in the middle of Wandsworth, <laughs> in, de in defence of the good people of Wandsworth. But if you wanted to make the journey from Manchester to Brighton, could you use this bus as any part of your journey? You, you could if you were adept with the Network Rail Journey Planner online. It but could, is this journey it could be on done. the Network Journey Planner online? The, the bus... A uh, very good question, yes. The bus journey isn't. You need to have seen the posters. Of which there are only three uh, posters. Well, now it's the, only you now and your the, band of brothers who posters, could make this journey. Now from, the posters are down to two. The posters should be in Manchester and Brighton. You, you would say... So, you, so, you would, so how you would, would you get from Manchester to Ealing you Broadway? Would catch, you would catch... Sorry, by 9.45 on a Tuesday oh, I see morning. what you mean, yes. Yeah, uh, well, I'd, I, I'd need the timetable in front of me. In theory... There'd be a, an early train down from Manchester to Reading, yeah. and then there'd be a service from Reading to Ealing Broadway. Yeah. If you really want, you would to... then catch the bus to Wandsworth Road. I well. put it to you: <laughs> it is a physical impossibility <laughs> to catch that 9:45 bus leaving from Manchester. It, it, that may be the case. The same morning. We need In the morning. Presumably, travel. come from Manchester the night before. Oh yes. Keep on Reading Station. Catch the. Oh yes, the waiting room is open all night. I said that the Ealing Broadway ghost bus train was the strangest parliamentary service, but I think on reflection that this one is even stranger. New Haven Marine Station, which I visited with local train enthusiast and ticketing expert Brian Boddy. There's a sign saying platform closed for temporary repairs. I mean, how long has it been closed? <laughs> it's been closed a long time, I would say. The roof is supposed to be unsafe. They say it's got a glass canopy but actually there's no glass in there there are people with their car parked well them. there we are so it can't be unsafe uh, next to a building uh, which is deserted and has been deserted for years no boats arrive at New Haven Marine you can't get on the platform there's another station 200 yards away so is New Haven Marine station closed not according to the Department of Transport Last year, the local MP, Lib Dem Norman Baker, asked the government when the last train service departed from New Haven Marine. And the minister said, a passenger train service is still operating from New Haven Marine Station. Mr Baker then asked the minister when the last train service had been delivered 
by rail. And the answer came back that New Haven Marine Station has not been safe for passengers since August 2006. We were going to visit New Haven Marine with Norman Baker, but then came the election, and in a huge irony, he became the transport minister himself, and so wasn't able to come. So Brian and I tried to work out what was going on for ourselves. There's a poster here. New Haven Marine Station, for the safety of our passengers, no train services are currently in operation from this station. Well, a debatable point, actually, because there is one train that goes in there every night, Monday to Friday, it leaves Lewis at 10 minutes to 8, comes down here, and then it goes back at a quarter past 8 from here back to Brighton. How do you know that there is such a train? Keeping one's eyes open, I suppose. No passenger could know of this train. Well, they wouldn't do unless you were an enthusiast. The poster here says, for passengers with a valid rail ticket intending to travel on the 1852 to Lewis weekday services, we will provide a replacement taxi at no additional cost in place of the scheduled train service. Alternatively, passengers may prefer to walk to New Haven Harbour Station, which is approximately three minutes walk north of this station in the direction of New Haven Town Centre. It's a three minutes walk if you're a slow walker. If you, if you walk at a normal pace, it's what, a minute? Um, and the, ca the catch here is, is that for passengers with a valid rail ticket intending to travel on the 1852, which how could you intend to travel on it if you don't know it exists? they'll provide a, a replacement taxi. So our next job <coughs> is to try and get a valid rail ticket for this service which doesn't That's seem to That's right, exist. and the booking office at the harbour station was withdrawn many years ago. Maybe there's one at the town station. Oh, there, there is a town station, yes, but the booking office is only open during the mornings. Uh, we've got <laughs> to get a valid rail ticket. There must be a way. We drove to Seaford Station to see if we could get a ticket there for the secret train no one was allowed to get on. Hello. Hello. What we would like to do, if possible, is we would like to buy uh, three singles from New Haven Marine Station okay, to harbour. Lewis. Yeah. In New Haven Harbour. No, New Haven Marine. We don't stop at New Haven Marine. Like the oh. The but, but there's a sign at New Haven Marine Station that says if you've got a valid ticket from New Haven Marine Station, yeah. they'll provide you a replacement taxi service to Lewis. OK. Um, is this a big wind-up? No. No, New Haven Marine Station is supposed to be open. Now she's ringing up her supervisor to see if there is any way that we can get a valid ticket from New Haven Marine Station. Uh, there's a queue forming behind us. If we had have had a valid rail ticket, according to her, and we'd have been disabled and unable to make the walk up to New Haven Harbour Station, then they would provide a replacement taxi service. But that isn't what it says here on the poster, and that isn't the reply the minister made to Norman Baker. So I think the time is coming to ring the number, which they've kindly provided, see if we can get any sense out of this very strange Catch-22 situation. Hello, um, I'm at New Haven Marine Station, and uh, which is open, and the poster here says, I'll read you what it says. It says, for the safety of our passengers, no train services. And can you provide us a replacement taxi service? New Haven Marine Station, this is. New Haven Marine Station, yeah. There was a boy here. My English teacher said I'd come to no good, but Little did he know that I'd stand about for hours at an end trying to buy a ticket from a station which exists, which is open, officially, legally. And that's the point, really. Legally, this station is open. You can't arrange a taxi for us. Yeah. Yes, if we arrange a taxi, yeah. I see, so we keep hold of the receipt, yeah. Yes, the tickets we've got. Explaining in the letter 
that we were not able to buy the valid ticket. Where would it take us to, the taxi? Amy, you've been a huge help. So, Brian, this is what we can do. We can now book a local taxi service who okay. will take us to anywhere we want to go. That's what she said. And then we send in uh, the receipt to them and they refund it. That sounds good. It's game on. <laughs> Yes. Because I think the next problem might be, is can a taxi actually get here to New Haven Marine Station? Can he get through the security mm. barrier? Hello, can we have a taxi please from New Haven Marine Station? No, New Haven Marine Station. Ah, now, you haven't ever heard of New Haven Marine Station. There are three stations in New Haven, believe it or not, yet. Yeah. No, there's three. D down railway roads and then kind of... Excellent. Well, the taxi's on its way. Ah, there's a car coming. Is he going to get through the security barriers? This is very exciting. This is one of the most obscure rail journeys that it's possible to take in the British Isles. And the exciting thing is, is it's all funded by the taxpayer and the licence fee payer. Oh, barriers opening. Oh, excellent. No, we're going to be reached. And the car's coming through. Hello. Oh, uh, can you take us please to New Haven Town Station? So uh, you picked us up from New Haven Marine, taken us, we're there at New Haven Town. So we've been on the road now for about, what, 30 seconds? Yeah. Um, did you even know there was a station there? No, I never realised that that was an actual station there, mm. train station, so... Thank you very <laughs> much indeed. My pleasure. How much do we owe you? £2.60, £2.60. Brilliant. I really think we've made it, Brian. I think at last we have made it. We are probably the first people and possibly the last people if anyone at Southern Railway's got any sense whatsoever. So, so it's been a bit fun, this, but there's a serious point, isn't there? Doesn't it mean that um, the Department of Transport or Network Rail can, in fact, close stations and services by stealth, not tell anybody and replace them with the silly services? Or well, that, that appears to be the case now, and someone ought to come clean about it all. The Ghost Trains of Old England was presented by Ian Marchant and produced in Bristol by Jolly and Jenkins.